hallelujah. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Worthy is the name of the Lord. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Worthy is that name. And he deserves all the glory. you are worthy of all the praise your name is to be adored always and your presence is to be sought and celebrated always may we never be found wanting of your presence and Lord may we never be found missing in your presence missing from your presence Lord Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because we know that the situations and the enemies that have proven to be notorious have now been served a warning. And we thank you, Father, because the warning that is a Davidic kind of warning is one that is followed by a big blow that is delivered, Lord, directly to the head of the opposition. And so, Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you because the consciousness of victory will be the booster of our confidence in you in this season, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me say that again. The confidence and the assurance that we have, the guarantee that we have, that the Lord is for us and not against us, that he has gone ahead of us to do battle, is the booster of our faith in this season. Why don't you give him thanks because he has gone ahead of you Give him thanks because he is your God. He is for you and not against you. Oh, worthy is your name. Let me go, Father, we worship your holy name. You were highly lifted up, and there is none that we can liken unto you. Thank you, Jesus. You alone my praise. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. My lady, get over, son, do the Lord get about. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the name. Worthy is the name. Worthy is the name. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Let's be seated. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. It is another, or it has been, I should say, another time of being seen in the presence of God. You know, let me tell you something. Sometimes, as children, if you would recall, you just want to be seen. You just want to be acknowledged. And I tell you that when we come before the presence of our Heavenly Father, there is that need that we all have to be acknowledged by the Father. And there are ways by which you get the attention of God. There are things that must be done, and they are not the most difficult things. In fact, if anything at all, it is usually a submission to that which has already begun. You know, many times we are so, well, we may have been preconditioned, not even may, we all have been preconditioned by the ways of the world system to think that we have to earn things and that we have to prove ourselves. And that is the reason why we don't usually think about what has been done for us as much as what we can do. And the reason why I'm taking my time to explain this is because it is so simple 
I wouldn't want anyone to miss the significance of being able to receive that which has been done for you. I'm going to talk about that in detail, but I want to first of all reference or, or apply what I'm saying to the concept of getting something out of the presence of God. You understand what I mean? Of being able to get something out of the presence of God as we should. So when we come into the presence of God, the fact that others are present with you fulfills that condition that Jesus describes so plainly. He says, wherever two or three of you are gathered in my name, I will be there. And you know, here at Communion House, because of the fact that the, the, the services and the gatherings that we have are naturally void of funfair, the worldly way, you can be rest assured that majority of the people here, by the grace of God, thank you, I like to think that everybody here is here in his name. And what I mean by the fun fair is, um, you know, there are certain places that you go to that, is, that have activities and, and, and attractions that are designed just to make you feel good. Things that are particularly designed and instrumented for your pleasure. And so it's very difficult in some of those situations, or it's not that easy for us to be able to tell who is actually there for God in his name, or who is there to be seen, or who is there just to have a good time. But as it is, we don't have much of those things. In fact, I can't readily think about one thing that we have here that is designed just to make people feel good. You understand what I mean? And so... When you are in a place like this, wherein we continue to persist against all odds to meet, then you know that you are in good company, and that is a company that fulfills a condition for a heavenly precipitation. And that condition, as Jesus said, is that you must be in my name gathered, and I will be there. So that is something that has already been done for you. The fact that somebody else in the act of obedience left their home to be here is something that is already being done for you. You just need to build on top of it. And I'm going to explain that using an example from the life of Jesus. Because this is one of the things that the Lord has been schooling me in and dealing with me concerning because if care is not taken, we most often remain oblivious or ev avoiding or evading of our privileges. Hallelujah. I need to be able to see this as clearly because I have decided to see those who are those who have come to the water tonight. I'm not just talking about the people that have come to the area or to the region of the Jordan, but tonight I know certain people have come to the water and I have decided to see who has come to the water because something is taking place at the Jordan and it's not just for those who have come, but it is for those people who are able to get into the water. So let's carry on. But I know that the Lord, in his goodness, will honor my quest, and he will let me see. Incidentally, I am seeing someone who is in the water who is actually not here physically, which is interesting because I've been talking about dimensions lately, and it appears as though this person's actually gotten a grasp of what I'm saying, even though she's not here today. Physically, I am seeing her in the water. Diamond is in the water. And she's not here physically. Kenyatta is in the water. I see you in the water. I see you in the water, and interestingly, you are trying to touch your knee in the water. And I know what it is. 
Because the one who is with me is as a clear glass. Whatever he shows me, I have the privilege of being able to see clearly. You are trying to touch your knee because there is something about your heart that is looking to break through in the place of prayer. And you are in the water tonight. And the Lord sees you. When Jesus was to be baptized, even though he was not unconscious, nor unaware of what he has brought to the table, he needed to begin his ministry by acknowledging what has already been done for him. When he came to the water to be baptized, John was talking about what Jesus has come to do. He was so confident and outspoken and buoyant about what Jesus has come to do. He says, you are the one, the Messiah. You have come to save all of us. So why would you want to be baptized by me? He says, it's you. I know you. You have come to, you are the one. And Jesus' mission statement was being recited by the forerunner. But Jesus did not just come in the enthusiasm nor the zeal of his assignment. He also came in the wisdom of purpose. He recognized that it was not just enough to be received in the order of one's assignment, it is important for there to be an exchange of the baton, which is the appreciation of that which has been done for you so that you are not building from the ground up, but you are building on top of the wall that has already been situated. You know, this is a season that I have, like I reminded us about two weeks ago or maybe a week and a half ago, that you need to know that which is your part to play and that which is the part of the Lord to play. And the Lord says you are to complete the wall that he has gotten started. So when Jesus came, I hope you're making the connection because it is imperative for you to be able to make that connection because it is a chain link and going into the water, you need the chain. For those who are following, I want to explain to you what I just said because it is paramount for you to understand because it is not my desire by any means whatsoever to see anybody left behind. And it is not the will of God to have any one of us miss out on the privilege of the ark. So we need to begin to connect the dot because these messages are not messages scripted in isolation, but they are verses that are part of a whole and you must not be found missing. When you are going into the water, you need to make the connection. You need the chain because in the tabernacle of Moses, whenever the high priest was to go into the Holy of Holies, a chain was attached to him for recovery so that he was not lost in the water. I don't want you to be lost in the water today because the one that is with me is as a clear mirror. Clear as glass and his ministry is not just mine to benefit from, but it is also yours to enjoy if you will come close enough to be able to see through the clarity of the unction that is in here tonight for your own salvation, for your own delivery, but most importantly, for today's mission, for your own acknowledgement by your heavenly Father. The Bible says you and I, we need to study to show ourselves approved. That word study does not mean to read books. That word study doesn't mean to go to Bible college. That word study means observe, be mindful, be intentional about showing yourself approved to God. We have been approved by God. That is the reason why the Bible says we have been accepted in the beloved. But it is not just enough for you to be approved by God because that is the mercy of God at work. You are also supposed to be approved to God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I haven't said that I want you to accept that as my epilogue. Now come with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 3.
already. So that which was hazy has not been made clear to me. Concerning you, men of God, the reason why you were examining your knees was because as you stepped into the water, you were given new knees. And that's why you noticed that something was different. Remember Naaman when he dipped in the water. What happened to him? The Bible says his skin was renewed as that of a newborn babe. He, he received new flesh. You see, because the old flesh is in enmity against God. The old flesh is not willing. Even when the spirit is willing to pray, the old flesh is leprous because it is been taken over by sin. And that is the reason why the Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Weak, and now the Lord has given to you the miracle of Naaman as you got in the water. And now you will pray. Even when you're unconscious of it, you will pray. Simply because it has been graced to you to have these knees that will tarry in the presence of God and therein become familiar with the hosts of heaven so that as you acknowledge them, they will acknowledge you. I am thankful today for the water because this is one of those visitations and one of those appointments that allows for us to drop a pin in time for a reference. So that when we begin to see disciples raised by the one that the Lord has set apart into the ministry of prayer, we will know and remember that it was because the Lord came through for the one who came through into the water. Like I told you on Tuesday, it is important for you to recognize how to play the entire dimensional game with God. Because God wants to be engaged across multiple dimensions. And I give you the example of Mary. Remember Mary? Mary went to Jesus at the wedding at Cana of Galilee and said to Jesus, these people have run out of wine and I know you can do something about it. And Jesus was like, my time has not come. Jesus was being approached by Mary. Ah. I want you to submit to the verse tonight. You see, the Lord told me before I left the house, but I didn't quite know what it was. I had a, I had a, a, a sort of like an understanding, a vague understanding, some kind of blurry understanding of what he was telling me. But now it is clear to me that we have to submit to the verse. You're already beginning to tell that this is not a message for everybody, but this is a message for you. And to submit to the verse is this in particular, because as I'm speaking to you, I'm finding words that are not my own, and I have to drop my words for the ones that are scrolling in this heavenly marquee. So there is a banner of words, and I have to submit to the verse. So I speak to you today that in the mighty name of Jesus, that as these words come forth, you will learn to yield your thought to the unction because the Lord is stirring up the unction within each and every one of you. As many people as will open their eyes to see, there are words that are coming into your mind that will supersede your thoughts, that should supersede your thought. The part you have to play is that of humility. Submit yourself to the verse. Submit yourself to the word of God that is permeating your thoughts and your consciousness in this very hour. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because you have not re revealed these things to the ones who have boasted of knowing when they were not known. Thank you for having chosen babes and chosen the children, and chosen the ones who are meek and lowly. And you have chosen to reveal these things to the ones who have come submitting themselves 
to your process, the ones who are not just standing afar off, but the ones who are dipping in the water. Submit to the verse, and you will become the verse. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because I'm going to tell you a story real quick. There was a time that I was told that I must bring my teachings down to the level of people's understanding. And my response was, if my teachings are inspired by the Holy Spirit, if they are truly spirit and life, then they come with their own kind of understanding. Because the Bible says that the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding unto the simple. And I was fought because I wasn't willing to water down the verse. Year in, year out, until that environment was no longer conducive for my next level. Even though to so many people I lost out because there was a platform that a man gave to me. But you are only going to deny God to receive another man's platform if you haven't seen the platform that God wants to give you. And I am standing here today Speaking freely, and the words are not bouncing back. They are actually finding their place in the hearts of people. And my joy is full because it might be a few more years, but the Lord says it will be shortly that we will see the fruits. I am seeing the fruits already, and so will you. God is good. Let's go to Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says Jesus, I mean, this is concerning John the Baptist. The Bible says, then Jesus came from Galilee to John. I want you to finish writing your note. I see pens stopped when I mentioned Mary. I still recommend that you listen to that message if you haven't. But just for the benefit of the day, someone needs to complete what God wants to say to them from that experience. Mary said to Jesus, we want you to do something. And Jesus was like, my time has not come. And he wasn't lying because he is the truth. You understand what I mean? It used to baffle me because... In one verse, he said, my time hadn't come. And soon afterwards, maybe in another two or three verses, he was doing the miracle. And I'm like, okay, well, what is this about? What was, did your time come or not? Because I don't get this. You said, oh, I didn't get it. But now I do. Mary said to Jesus, do this here and now, and Jesus says, my time has not come. What that means is that the time for the thing that you seek has not come to the dimension from whence you ask. And the lady was like, okay. Let's go then to the dimension where your time has already come. Because there is a dimension, like I told you, and I'm going to keep saying it, where time itself is material and you can lay hold of it. 
Many of us are in that situation wherein we are saying, God, how much longer? And God was like, well, I, I mean, in this dimension, it might take a long time. It might be a few years. But then if you know how to meet him in the dimension wherein it's already happened, you are most welcome. He said, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast away. If you know how to catch God in the dimension of his power at the time of beauty, he will do it for you. <laughs> how many people remember this scripture, the way you learned it when you were a child, that God makes everything beautiful in his time? That must have been from some Catholic Bible somewhere. Because that's not what scripture says. Scripture did not say God makes everything beautiful in his time. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful in its time. There's a difference. Because what is God's time? He says to me, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. What a dilemma. How do you even resolve that riddle? What side of the coin do you choose? The 1,000 years of the day. And so God in his love would not make you subject to the unraveling of such a mystery. And that is the reason why he allocated time for each occurrence. Each ask, each request, each answer, each blessing, and better all, or above all, each mercy has an allotted time. And that is the reason why the Bible says God makes everything beautiful in its time. So there is a time for that job. There is a time for that opportunity. There is a time for that spouse. There is a time for that growth. Even there is a time for the unction that you seek with which to speak the mysteries of life. There is a time. He makes everything beautiful. In the time for the thing. And so when Jesus said to Mary, my time has not come. And Mary was like, okay, you can do with your time what you will. You're the Lord. But I need this miracle. So what did she tell Jesus? She said, she, she just turned to the people and she said to them, whatever he tells you, do it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say this for the benefit of those who are not here. You see, we have been reading from right to left. But we also have to read from left to right. And why is God telling us that? Because many of us have become like a one-way traffic. We have been going just one way with the word of God that the Bible tells us is actually a two-edged sword. And that is the reason why it's like you're just going in one direction and you're wondering why the blessings are incomplete because the blessings are not promised to you only when you go out. The Bible says they are for you when you go out and when you come in. It is from left to right and from right to left. And so when the woman read the room from right to left, she saw that Jesus was not about to move because his time had not come. And so she asked Jesus to do something, and Jesus was saying it was in time, so what did she do? She went and told the people to do whatever Jesus says. And it's as simple as that. And so... Don't be obsessed with what things you have asked God to do for you. Be equally concerned about what God has asked you to do for him. Because one of the easiest ways to ensure that God does what you say is for you to do what he says. In one dimension, he's asking you. In another dimension, you're asking him. Go to the dimension wherein you have power. And then you will receive from the dimension of his power. You, the people had the power to fill the water pots with water. And Jesus had the power to turn the water into wine. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Today, if you haven't put it together just yet, I'm sharing with you the power of righteousness. 
Because righteousness is what gives you acknowledgement before God. You want to come before the presence of God and be seen and heard? You want to be acknowledged by the God of the army of angels? There is a way to get his attention. There is a way to show up in the presence of God and be able to build on that which has been given to you so that you can stand where you will see his glory. And I'm showing you from Jesus' example that way of righteousness. So here is the deal. Again, I mentioned to you that there are times wherein situations, people, and circumstances want you to focus on what you are supposed to do. And then you become so preoccupied with the responsibility that you have, neglecting the privileges that you must receive. It is essentially the parable of salvation, but I will break it down a little bit more by the grace of God. So let's keep reading. In fact, let's read that verse 13 again. The Bible says that Jesus came from Galilee to John Okay, one more thing about Mary, because I see you're still writing, and it's not complete. And by now, you already know who you are. So I will give to you one more thing. Come with me to the book of Luke, chapter 2. Because your book has to be complete. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 30, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Why did Mary approach Jesus for a miracle? Because she had seen him as the salvation of Israel. So if this is the Savior, he's not just going to save us when he is ready, but he will save us from everything, including from embarrassment. And the significance of embarrassment is that embarrassment causes us what? Shame. And shame is the opposite of glory. This woman had a revelation of the glory of God. And so whatever did not seem like glory, she called Jesus to fix it. So for you, the one that the Lord has been revealing to me, by the way, the Lord is about to add colors to your garment and the room where you write. You see, you're writing things that are very structured, things that are very clear by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But the first time I saw you, I noticed something was odd. I couldn't put my finger on it. But everything that I saw in the room that you are in is gray, completely grayed out. And the Lord was waiting for you to complete the verse. And to complete the verse is to have your eyes set on the Lord and to have your heart set on glory. And color started to come into the room. And what is the significance of color coming into the room? Not only will you see, not only will you hear, not only will you know what's in the heart of the Father, but you will also know your season because colors represent seasons. So that you will be able to tell to the one that comes to you in the morning, return in a few hours for the Lord's messengers will be here. That is where God is taking you. God is taking you to a dimension wherein your prophecies and your visions are not just clear, but your timing is on the mark. If I were you, even though I don't think that was me, I would pull down that grace as well because it is for all. Alrighty. So thank you, Jesus, because finally now we can keep reading our Matthew. You know, that is what happens when we come into the presence of God and we're going in this direction to the house of Jarius to raise his daughter from the dead. 
But there's a woman with the issue of blood that causes for us to stop along the way because she's making such a demand on the grace of God. Let me tell you something. Jesus is happy to stop for the one who is able to make that demand strong enough. Don't you think for a second that those thoughts that you're having when you are in God's presence are just figments of your imagination. Some imagination. Some of the thoughts that you have when the presence of God is strong is as a result of your subconscious mind finally having a voice to speak that which has been missing to reality. Place a demand on the grace of God. On Tuesday when I ministered, there were certain things that I knew were not communicated on Tuesday because Shayla was not there. I'm only giving her as an example. Some other people too could have been able to draw certain things out of me on the day. But there was a particular thing that I thought, hmm, maybe if she was there because there is, we, we, we have ways of, of connecting with the grace of God. You know, I started to understand that thing better with my wife, there are certain things that she's able to draw out of me. And so I started to think to myself, oh, wait a minute. Man is truly a well before the Lord and others can draw from you what they need. And so when the unction is present, cast your net. Because it is a gift not to the man, it is the man that is a gift to the body. We are without excuse whenever we see the one upon whom the unction of the Holy Spirit is evident. What do you do? You draw from the unction. So that it is not just the words that have been spoken, it is also the words that must be heard. There are two different things. There are certain things that I speak because freely have I received Freely do I give, but sometimes just because of the nature of preservation, the gift holds certain virtues back. They're not given, they are taken. And that was why Jesus says concerning the woman with the issue of blood, when they looked around, Jesus says, somebody touched me. And they were like, Jesus, everyone is touching you. Jesus was like, I know, but y'all are just taking that which I am giving. But this woman took that which I was keeping, virtue left me. You see, I say these things to you because I don't know how much longer we have in this season of preparation. But then I also know that we have been given all the equipping that we need so that we are without excuse. What will you draw today? In this same presence of God, somebody got a new pair of knees with which to pray and be heard. He did not have to travel as far as a Naaman traveled. He did not even have to dig in the same Jordan. Remember that name? Uh, what's his name again? The Syrian general. I just mentioned his name. N Naaman. Naaman had to dip in the water seven times. This man, one time. No knees, no flesh. Naaman had to carry out an investigation to compare the rivers of Abana and Fapar to the rivers in Israel. And he was like all the rivers that are in Damascus. Let's even take two of them, for example, Habana and Fapa. He said, are they not better than all the rivers in Israel put together? But yet you have asked me to wash in the Jordan. He did all of that simply because he knew the value of what he sought. But thank God for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I don't have to do all of those. We just have to receive that which has been done for us. And that is the reason why a prayer life has been transformed in here before your very face. And I say that simply because, hallelujah, I am able to speak from the dimension of fulfillment because I know what I see. I see men of prayer being raised by the man of God. I see watchmen being pulled from the dunghill and set upon the watchtower. And I see them glow with the fire of the countenance of God. I see them standing for the sake of you and your children. I see them taking their place and the Lord taking his glory. Let me tell you something. We are experiencing a transformation that will be like a transmogrification when it happened because it will be but in the twinkle of an eye. And we will be changed. 
because that's the difference for those of us who may not have studied that word, the difference between transmogrification and transformation is transformation takes a process of time, but transmogrification appears as though time was not needed, that it just happened in an instant. But we know that time is always required, so the ones who get transmogrified are the ones who hop into the dimension of speed. I must say that virtue wells up within me. Just a heads up. Matthew chapter 3 verse 14. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. How many people are seeing dimensions at play here? I'm calling that out because I want you to start to use it, right? Because before I started talking about dimensions, what did I tell you? I told you, I gave you a heads up. I said, I'm about to tell you things that you will begin to use even from the door. I said that the teaching, two teachings before, or two meetings before the meeting of Tuesday, okay? So what did I tell you? It's a chain. It's a daisy chain. You need to connect all the dots. Think about the last six messages or so as just one message. Just think about it. Even when my wife came in here after, after Tuesday, my wife said to me, she said, apparently you haven't watched my teaching from Saturday. I said, I started. She said, but you haven't finished. She said, because if you have finished, you may not have said some things you were saying because you were literally repeating what I said using even the same example that I stated. And I said, glory be to God in the highest. For the Bible says, and the two shall become one. I am happy to be a witness to that which has come from the heart of the Lord. You understand what I mean? It's not, plag it's not plagiarism. It is witnessing. So, this is communion house when people call you out for not listening to messages that you miss. So, if there's one that you haven't listened to, please learn from my example before someone calls you out. John said, I am supposed to come to you, but you are coming to me. You know, Brother Ron, if that was you and I, what do we typically do in situations like that? We pretend to be humble. We're like, all right, well, if you insist, I'm just going to go wait there. You come to me, you know. I, I mean, I didn't want to bother you, that's why, but you, but you come to me. You know, that was what John told Jesus. He says, no, 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 no. The Bible says he tried to discourage Jesus, to prevent him from coming to where he was. John did not want Jesus to go into the water, but Jesus knew that the water was a portal to heaven. The Bible says the waters above, what did God call them? He called them heaven. And so John was like, I am already in the water. I want to come out to you on that other side. I want to be in your dimension. And Jesus was like, so you can shortchange me? You want to be in that dimension and in this one, but you want to keep me to this dimension? Jesus says, no, I am coming to your dimension. I am coming through the water. And look at what Jesus said to him. Verse 15, the Bible says, but Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now, for thus is fitting for us that we may fulfill all righteousness. I tell you what, there is a dynamite that has already been set up to open up the rock that holds your blessing. But there are buttons and switches that need to be activated and they don't exist in just one dimension for your safety. Because if all of the switches that control your blessings exist in one dimension, like I told you on Tuesday, the enemy can take advantage of you by keeping you out of that dimension or going ahead of you to disable all of the buttons or have a premature activation of the explosion that reveals your blessings. And so what does God do? God positions the blessings in multiple dimensions so that you can learn to go in and out, making sure that you leave no stones unturned. Jesus says we have to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus stood before John, and this is the revelation that the Holy Spirit gave to me. Jesus stood before John, 
And John was literally using his hands to feel Jesus out because where they were was still darkness, but John did not know. I say this to you today in the mighty name of Jesus that you will recognize the need for light so that you're not just trying to feel your way through destiny. Many of us are so accustomed to using sticks to navigate the will, will of God for our lives. And because we're getting by, we think that is the best way to tra travel through time. But there is a better way. And I offer to you a reminder word that there is a better way. The Bible says there is a more sure word of prophecy. There is a better way. I said before you this day, life and death. Choose life that you may live. There is a better way. You can go through life not as one who is feeling its, his way or her way through positions and opportunities, but one who actually sees very clearly because the light has shown. John was there in the dark. And I, I, I say that because of what I've seen, but if you look into scripture, you will know that there was no light until the Lord said, let there be light. There was no light until the Lord spoke, right? And by this time, the Lord hadn't spoken. It wasn't until the Lord spoke over the Lord Jesus, that the Bible says, Rejoice you who are of the region of Zebulon and Naphtali, those of you who have been wallowing in darkness because now your light has come. They were in darkness and they didn't know it, and yet they were men of Zebulon and Naphtali. They were men of means and opportunity. That is what it means to be men of Zebulon and Naphtali. means to be men who have been given the opportunity by God for plenty, but they can only use their hands to fill out the boundaries of their providence simply because their eyes have not opened. Why? Because their light hadn't come. John was one of those people in the region of the Jordan where he was. He was still there in darkness even though he was the forerunner of the light. And so when Jesus came, Jesus was like, no, 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 no. We need to fulfill all righteousness. We need to put all of the batteries in and we need to switch. We need to turn on all the switches so that there can be light. I say this to you also because of the fact that when Jesus came and he went into the Jordan, he was reenacting what happened when the Lord came in the beginning to Genesis. And the Bible says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was upon the Jordan and John did not know it. And so there was a reason why God spoke. And do you know that when God spoke in Genesis chapter 1, two things happened before light came. Do you remember what those two things were? The Lord came to that dimension. And when he came to that dimension, he saw the darkness. And it was like, okay, I see the darkness. And what else? His Holy Spirit came. The Bible says that the Spirit of God was hovering upon the face of the deep. Let me tell you what I'm doing is very intentional. I am opening two portals to you at the same time that the Lord may grant you speed. I am bringing to you from the old and from the new the same occurrence but two events. And the reason why that is important is because I know who I am. I am that scribe that is instructed in the things of God that brings from his treasures things both old and new that my friends may not remain in want. I bring to you today as that scribe from my treasures things that are both old and new. So when I speak to you a thing and I speak to you two things, you will know that it is for your safety as it does not grieve me for I am equipped for this assignment in this order of confirmation. Jesus came to the Jordan and it was darkness. Now this is where you need to pay attention because you are a son of the prophet and it is time for you to prophesy. And so you must see the two doors that I am opening and get yourself familiar with it so that when I am gone, you can open those same doors and let light come into the realm 
of your assignment. I speak to you today in the mighty name of Jesus that you will become another man. Because there is such a welling up of the unction within me. And I'm about to start to call out the ones that I know who are drawing from the virgin. They are the ones in the water with me. You see, when I said I am seeing people in the water, I ignored him. But I knew he was in the water. But he came to me and he pulled at me. He plucked at me. I still ignored him, but he was there. And he said, Father. He said, Baba. You see, when he was doing that, I knew that I could not ignore him anymore because there was such a quest within him to see what I see. I tell you, it is not the platforms of men that I am after, but I am after the platform of God. You see, the platform of God is for discipleship. It doesn't have to be a million people. It doesn't even have to be 4,000. It could be just the 12, but the will of the Father will be done, and the world will change, and souls will be saved. Because I have not followed after him for nothing. I may have left all to follow him, but he has given to me by his grace such an opportunity that only he can give. And that is the dedication to discipleship, to see others go through the portal that I have been brought through. And so I say to you again that Jesus was standing at the deep. He was in the water. The deep of Genesis chapter 1 means water. Because the Bible says the Lord came and there was darkness upon the face of the deep. And he said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, separating the waters from the waters. When the waters are still combined, not having been separated, it is called the deep. And so when Jesus came, he stood there and he told John, we have to fulfill all righteousness. Because it's not just the righteousness in heaven but it also has to be righteousness on the earth because when you go back to Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. That is, see, that is by the way, but it's very powerful if you would just allow yourself to meditate on it for a moment. All righteousness is righteousness that has already been fulfilled in heaven where the word of God is forever settled and that same righteousness being fulfilled on the earth through the process of alignment. And what is alignment? How do you align the righteousness in heaven to the righteousness that is on the earth? And does anybody know? Obedience. When you obey the instruction that is in the heart of the Father, there is alignment. Jesus was told to go to the Jordan by the wisdom of God that was in his ear. And so, here comes Jesus and he says that we may fulfill all righteousness and then he, John, allowed him and then, ah, Holy Ghost, let me show you this in Genesis chapter 7. Hmm. <laughs> and we're going to come back to that Matthew. You see, because I want you to be able to hop right into that window so that you can swim in the water. The Bible says in 7, 11, and 13, let me read 13 first. The Bible says, on the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark. The process of going into the ark is a process that is taken very seriously by heaven. So that is the reason why they didn't just say they entered the ark. They were listed. Because going into the ark is a function of being in the book of life. Everything that is being said concerning the Lord Jesus as he got into the Jordan is the same thing that heaven has prepared for you because your name is on the manifest. So that when I say this thing, you don't just picture Jesus, but you also picture yourself. This experience is a manifold grace experience, multidimensional grace experience. So you are being enumerated 
Let's just leave 11 for now. You are enumerated already and in the book of life. So what I'm about to tell you about Jesus is your privilege in Christ. And I want you to start to see yourself in that light because once was it said, but twice did I hear it, that the excellency of power belongs to God. I may say this only once, but I want you to hear it twice. Hear it concerning Jesus and hear it concerning yourself. Because the one who is with me is still with me. He is a being that appears to be made out of glass, crystal clear. And you know why? Because I asked him, I said, why are you the way you are? I had never seen him before, but for this meeting. And he has remained with me. I don't even think I've had this many chills ever before at any one time. Because every time I come close to him, I feel the vibration all over my body. And you know, when I asked him, he only smiled, but I heard what he said. When I asked him, why are you the way you are? He says to me, he says, I am an embodiment of the water. I let you see this side and the other side. The Lord brought to me a messenger who was made of the same fabric as the firmament, separating dimensions, separating the waters from the waters. Watch out for me, my life is about to not be the same. Because the faithfulness of God, you see, when the enemy thinks that he has beaten you into the ground, but you keep pursuing the fulfillment of purpose, the Lord sends you messenger. As I was coming in here today, I, I thought something might happen. Because I know that when you come to the wilderness, he will send you his angel. And my wife came up today and read to us from Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4, and the Lord says, I have gone ahead of you. The Lord came ahead of me today with his holy messenger, one who embodies the firmament to me, that I may see this side and that side looking through this miracle of God, this messenger of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because of my privilege in Christ Jesus. And as many as see me today, as I leave this level to the next, let the same mantle fall upon them. In the name of Jesus. Now, Matthew chapter 7, chapter 3. Let's just finish reading it and... And be ready to proceed from here. Hallelujah. You see, Maquandelis free mendos, ice free mendos, adums free mendos. There are not many who speak the language of this particular angel. It is such an ancient order, an order that had to exist for other orders to exist. <laughs> And with such longevity of service comes speciality of authority. Cast your net. Communion house, cast your net. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And the Bible says, when he had baptized, and when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove upon him. You see... What did I tell you about Genesis chapter 1? God came to the deep. Jesus came to the water. God's spirit came upon the water. And when the Holy Spirit came here, where did he come? He came upon Jesus. You know why? 
because Jesus became the water. Jesus became the water because if Jesus had not become the water, you cannot be born again. If Jesus did not become the water, you cannot be born of him. And that is the reason why he said, unless a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus became the water because the first water was what Adam was called out of because the ground came out of that water from which man was formed. And another ground had to come out of Jesus upon which he built his ecclesia. And he had to become the water that provided the new man. And that's why I told you, I want you to listen very closely because you are of the order of the ark. And so all what I am about to say about Jesus or what I just said now about Jesus, I say concerning you too, it is time for you to become the water so that out from within you, the miracles can be pulled out so that others can draw from you because now you have become life. Jesus says, I am resurrection. I am life. What are you? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What are you? Are you not as he is? Jesus became the water so that the Holy Spirit can move upon him, and now the stage is set for the greatest of all miracles. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, the Lord spoke. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's finish reading and I'm going to summarize this. And then we're going to close. So that you can be put together again. You have been operated upon in the course of this meeting. And as we close, you will be closed up, put together again. Fully loaded now with the grace of God. Transformed into a new creation. That you may show forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. The water was called from the darkness into light. You have become that water now and you are coming into light. The angel of the Lord that stood with me was in the beginning. He was with God. And in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The Lord himself is that power of vision. Himself is that grace of life. Hear me what I have said to you and let it be known to you today that the Lord is here. When Alan came in here, he says the Lord is here and he is looking upon you. How did he know except that the Lord had revealed to him the same thing that the Lord was showing to me, that God is here and he can see us and he actually acknowledges us. The mirror is here. And suddenly... A voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The summary of my charge to you today is this, folks. Jesus could have stayed content with the testimony or the declaration of John the Baptist concerning all of what he was supposed to do. Oh, I am the Savior. Yes, I get it. Let me just start saving people. But Jesus took himself to that dimension wherein there was one more thing that needed to be done for the alignment to happen between heaven and earth. Because he knew the Father wanted to open up the heavens. But if there's no alignment with the earth and the heavens open, the earth will flood out again. And so he needed to set that alignment first of all so that instead of a flood that destroys, we hear the word that brings life. 
And so instead of being obsessed with what you're supposed to do, Jesus built upon what has been done for him, the righteousness of the providence of God that brought him a forerunner. And he allowed himself to build on that by saying to John, just baptize me. And the moment that is done, Jesus was not only a man that does, he became the one that becomes. He became water. You see, the moment you become a thing, your efforts are no longer required to get your assignment done. Grace begins to work for you. So today, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we close out, we're going to pray from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 19, verse 12. We're going to say another prayer from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 7. And we'll say a prayer from Psalms 103, verse 1, but we'll say it all in reverse order. Because as these words hit your spirit, your flight begins. So come with me to Psalm 103, verse 1. And this will be a great time for us to break bread. But I want everybody to read this 103. So if you are in charge of bread breaking today, make sure you read this. And then you can give out the bread later. 103, verse 1. Thank you. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I want you to say, I submit the water back to the Lord. You see, because the spirit of the Lord needs to be upon that water. The Holy Spirit needs to be above, in charge of this assignment, not me. I'm not going to say, oh, because now I have all of these privilege within me. Now it is now time for me to start to flood out my enemies and to shower my friends. No, the Lord says, you have to bless him. Submit to him all that is within you. Genesis 18. What verse did I tell you? Genesis 18? Say that again. 18, what verse? Did I tell you a verse? Okay, I'm going to read three verses to you. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 18, verse 12, Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure in my old age also. Where did she laugh? She laughed within herself. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I bring to you yet another palindrome, and I, want you, I don't want you to miss it. When you bless the Lord with all that is within you, do you know what that does? It brings all of your blessings within you. Let me say that again. You see, God wants to release everything to you, but he wants to be sure that you will release everything back to him. And so the moment you allow his Holy Spirit to come upon all that is within you, what is within you? The water is within you. Because it is within the water that the baby is conceived. You do not find the woman pregnant with child and the child is sitting in a sack of air. The baby can only be in the water. And what was in the water that was within Sarah? Laughter. What is the meaning? What is laughter in Hebrew? Isaac. The moment... Laughter was found within Sarah. She conceived with Isaac. This is the reason why you need to be with a man of God that is that mirror that shows you this side and that side. 
You see, because the moment you have a revelation of what he has for you on that side, and you know what she saw? She only saw heaven because the Bible says the one who sits in the heaven laughs. And the Bible says the waters he called heaven. So in that water that is above is what is laughter. And she had that revelation through the mirror of promise. And she was conceived with child. I beg you in the name of the Lord, bless the Lord with all that is within you. Sarah conceived of laughter. Let's read it again. The Bible says, and she laughed, where? Within herself. That which was in her was what? Heaven's been waiting to get into the world for the longest. She, everyone was just waiting for her to finally have laughter in the water. And that laughter started to grow in the water. All that is within you. God saw his seed in the water. He said, I can see. It's just like when you go and do an ultrasound while you're pregnant. You're like, I see the baby. I see the baby. The moment John baptized Jesus, God says, oh, that's my son. That is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He spotted his son in the water. <laughs> How be it, I speak mystery. And it's okay. Jeremiah 17. The Lord says it is two or three. I've given you two, so let's break bread. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, these ones have left all to follow you. Give them in every dimension of the fulfillment of righteousness, I pray, I beg of you today, your body and your blood. So that in all of our dimension of existence, in all of our dimensions of existence, we would have eaten your body and drunk your blood. So that everywhere we turn, we find you. How many people remember that on Tuesday the Lord Jesus appeared to me and he said to me, tell them to find me. I saw him in a building that looks almost confusing because it was like a maze. Several corridors. But everywhere that I turned, he was there. Every single corridor that I turned into, he was there. When Adi and Ifi just got to America, for the first two days, they were like, do you teleport? Because they're like, we saw you here just now, and then you have appeared over there. And I told them, I said, well, I'm a multidimensional species. So it's okay for me to appear and disappear. It took almost two days for them to be able to wrap their heads around it. You remember that experience? They're like, are you teleporting? Because we saw you here, we saw you there. You see, the way that I can describe to you the experience that I have on Tuesday is like everywhere that I turned, all the corridors, Jesus appeared. And every single time he appeared on the same side of the wall and he would say to me, tell them to find me. I pray for you again now as a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you because they will find you. By the signal of your body and your blood, they will remember where you are. <laughs> he says, do this in remembrance of me. You will suddenly remember that, wait a minute, that's where the Lord, that's where he stood, that's where he is, and you will find him. You may eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood as an act of faith in his mercy and not in your abilities. Consume the body of the Lord and his blood 
in submission to his salvation because you cannot save yourself. None of us is good enough to save ourselves. Consume his body and his blood as a way of saying, I receive the privilege of the propitiation for my sins such that I can now stand before the throne of grace boldly because Jesus died for me, not because of the fact that I washed myself in the water, but that because he washed me in the pure water that he, beca that he became, that he washed me in his blood. Because the blood does not travel alone. When his side was pierced, we saw the water in the blood. So kumt i in the os, ayum ti in the hos. As kum ti in the hos, balush ki in the hos. You have been reminded of where the treasure room is. The instruction of the angel of the Lord that I echoed to you in this dimension is telling your spirit where the treasure room is so that you can unlock it and bless the lives that you have been sent to. No more excuses for why lives are not being changed because of you. Now find the door. Jesus says, I am the door. Oh Lord, how I wish we could just remain here. But I know that we must take our leaves so that we can return bearing fruits, giving thanks in the name of Jesus. You may eat and drink. Hallelujah. It is my desire to minister to you some more. Praise the Lord. But I will minister to you this way. See his glory. The Bible says, and the word of God became flesh and dwelled amongst men. And we beheld his glory, and it was as of the Son of God. Behold his glory. See through this mirror that is also the firmament. See what's on the other side, so that you can be conceived of the same. Bless the Lord my soul and all that is within me be found with child of the Holy Ghost be found with the seed of life be found with the fulfillment of promise be found with Isaac let there be laughter within Now I pray for you that you will begin to see yourself now as one who now knows the secret to birthing great things in righteousness. The secret is you have to conceive of it in the water. Tell yourself, now I know what it is. Now it has been revealed to me. I have seen it. I have heard the whisper of understanding leading me to the gates of treasure that I may be fully equipped unto every good work. I have seen it. It is my portion in Christ Jesus. It is my privilege. It is not just what I do. It is who I become by fulfilling all righteousness. All righteousness has been fulfilled for me in Christ Jesus because I have now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have the life of God within me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because these are the ones that you have chosen to show forth your praise. Glorify yourself in us as we glorify you 
to the world. I'm in the house. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord again for this night that he has met with us. Let's prepare our offering. Let us continue to give and press in and giving in this season of multiplication. God is good. Thank you, Gavin. Hallelujah. Several ways to give. Cash App, Dollar Sign, Communion House. PayPal at Communion House, as well as the Zelle number, as well as the tech to, text to give and online giving, communion.house slash give. Let us give in faith and obedience. Again, reminding us of this fertile ground that is before us. Hallelujah. If you need an envelope, you'll see it here to my right, your left, with our dear brother Kenyatta. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. There's none like you, O God. Lord, your word declares that you are the revealer of secrets. That if we cry out unto you, that you will show us great and mighty things, things in which we do not know. Lord, we thank you for finding pleasure in us, O oh God, by coming to us, O oh God, by your mercy and seeing us, Lord, for looking upon us. For, Lord, you have placed us, you have made us to be in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, O oh God, and you are well pleased in us, in Christ Lord, as we are before you and come before you, O oh God, in this time of giving, of offering, of tithes, O oh God, let them be found pleasing in your sight. We declare that all glory, all honor and power belong to you and to you alone. And we all said, amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the name of the Lord again. God is good. We know that this is a message we got to dial into again. If we haven't caught Tuesday yet, please let it get in your spirit. There's so much to draw from, and the virtue is upon us. And make sure, let's share this with someone. You know, I was talking to my dear sister, Manuelita, earlier, and we know that there are those that the Lord is, is calling. They're drawing. You know, we've been seeing them in dreams and visions. They've been coming to us in our spirit. So let's be intentional, especially with the grace that has been declared over us by the woman of God and that effective evangelism, okay, to go at it and keep at it, okay, winning those souls, bringing them where they need to be. Amen? God is good. Everyone have a blessed night.